Welcome to Evolution in Controls, Morel Group's video and podcast series on the latest trends, technologies, and solutions for today's and tomorrow's motion control problems. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Tim Wilson. You can't read the news today without hearing about supply chain problems. Whether it's pandemic-related delays, seaports that are overloaded, or nightmares like a blocked Suez Canal, getting product delivered on time or as promised is harder than ever. According to a recent Oracle study, 91% of respondents consider the supply chain when making purchasing decisions. The ability to get product on time or as promised is as important as what you buy. But manufacturing is built upon the premise of available material. What do you do when availability can't be guaranteed? Can some superior planning provide the guarantees? How do you guarantee delivery when there are so many variables at play? Can anything be done? Here to talk with us about a Morel solution that is delivering product just in time is Mike Croy. He's Morel's Senior Product Manager for Mobile Hydraulics. Mike, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Tim. So tell me, what kind of issues are the customers facing with product shortages or product unavailability? So our customers are really just having a hard time getting almost every component. Um, It's really across the board, whether it's computer chips, plastic tanks, um, any hydraulic component, everything is just really creeped out. I think we've all seen that. We watch the news and we see supply chain issues. I think everyone knows that's going on. So our customers are no different. They're seeing that issue. And they're facing this every day, real time, cannot get product. Every day, yes. What kind of, what are they doing to, to overcome it? Are they able to overcome it in any way? So a lot of times they'll go either into like an allocation where they, you know, they need so many components to keep up with the production schedule um, or they're forced to shift their production schedule or, you know, unfortunately they may be forced to shut their line down for a period of time. And just stop production. Mm -hmm. Okay. As I understand it, we have a solution. We've implemented a program. What's it called? And and tell me a little about it. Yeah, so we have a program we call uh, Morel Inventory Management, or MIM for short. And it's basically a way that we, Morel, and our internal purchasing, planning, and sales team can become an extension of your purchasing department and your planning department at the customer. Hmm. So are we actually working with them or are we working alongside them? How does it, how does it work? So we work directly with the vendors that we represent um, and then we interface with your purchasing and production and production planning teams so that we're bringing the components that you need. We're either trying to pull those in or we're doing adv- we're ordering out in advance of the lead time and we're constantly watching that lead time. What kind of in- you say that we you work with the customers purchasing team what kind of information are we expecting the customers to give us so the customer has to provide us with the 12-month rolling forecast and then we uh, sit down with the customer and determine a release time that's acceptable for them that release time could be anywhere from one week to 12 weeks it really just depends on their schedule how firm their backlog is what's a release time what do you mean so release time is a time from which you would call us or email us and ask for a product we would have that amount of time to then release the product to you. How much advance notice we need before we ship them the product? Correct. What kind of what kind of release times are we working with? So we have customers that have a week release time. Okay. Where it's you know they buy one item from us in high volume, and we're just constantly placing orders out for them. And we just had one week in which to deliver. And we deliver okay. with one week. We have other customers that have a fairly firm backlog. Right, they're sold out. You know, some of them may at this point be sold out to 18 months from now, so they don't really need a release time that's short. And so with them, we'll give them a 12 or 18 week lead time or release time. So you said that they have the customer has to give us a 12 month rolling forecast. So every month they're giving us an extension of the forecast that's 12 months out. Correct. What happens as those as that forecast changes, either up or down? So if that forecast it can't change within your release time. So that goes into the discussion of what kind of a release time you want. So you're firm once you're within the release time. Outside of that release time, we give customers a very high degree of flexibility. We're able to either push and pull the orders around with our vendors, or we'll bring them in and sit them on the shelf and then adjust the orders that we cannot move. When you say bring them in and sit them on the shelf, you're talking about material that we, Morel, bring in 
and that we hold in inventory. Yes, every customer we have that's on the MIM program, we stock components for. Is the customer obligated to buy everything that they forecast in that 12-month rolling forecast? No, we do not hold you to that. Um, You typically will have a customer issue us a blanket order. That blanket order is just so we have a PO number to bill against. We never hold the customer. You know, if they are unable to get components from other vendors, therefore they don't hit their number for the year, we do never force that product down there. What kind of quantities are these are these customers ordering? How, what would be a, the quantity of a year's forecast? Is it single digits, double digits, triple digits? So we have customers that right now would make probably 25 to 30 machines a year. Uh, we have customers that make 300, and then we have customers that make 10 to 15,000. Give me some examples. Do you have some examples of, of customers that are on it? What effects has it, has it brought to them? What benefits are they seeing? Mm-hmm. So we have customers that uh, we used to not handle this way in the past. We would run into issues when our vendors' lead times would creep out. Um, They would be unable to produce a machine. So now we forecast that, and we actually take their forecasting information to the vendors. So the vendor is actually driving material flow outside of us, even placing an order. It doesn't sound like we're doing anything that that is... uh that that scientific or that that uh, great are our competitors matching what we're doing or are we leading the field in this I have never seen any competitors do this typically a competitor would uh, for a high volume OEM would require a large blanket order and then they would force you to take that blanket order in the amount of time that you issued the blanket so if it's a one-year blanket and you only produce half of that they would force you to take the other half at the end of the year if there's a rolling forecast, let's say there's a customer that wants to start on this program, rolling 12-month forecast, how long does it take to get implemented at a customer and begin working on this? Also, let's talk a little bit about what the steps are. Yeah, so the big hurdle is the unforecasted lead time. So when we start production, we do have to play with the lead time in the very beginning. So if an item has a 20-week lead time and we start, you want to start production at 15 weeks there could be an issue. We can try and pull things in. Um, Our vendors do have programs to support OEM starting production for high volume, um, so we can usually pull things in. Uh, But we do play the unforecasted lead time game in in the very beginning. Once we're off and running and we're in production, then that becomes less of an an issue, and then we go back to just the release time. You mentioned vendors, and that's a good point we hadn't talked about yet. do our vendors, which in this case might be just Bosch Rexroth, but do our vendors, do they participate in this? What role do they play? Yes, yeah, so we send the forecast. Uh, the forecast that the customer gives to us is by their machine type. Um, that's really the first step in MIM is you, we have to create a bill of material that's unique to every machine. Uh, we do that because our customers rarely can tell us oh, I need this many of this pump or this many of this valve. It's, I'm going to build this many machines this month and this month. And we figure that out. We figure that out at the front end. So when the customer calls and says, I want to build this many of this specific rig, we can break that down by part number. Then we communicate that forecast to our vendors. And then they can plan their production around it. And they will usually give us a truncated lead time. As long, Usually if it's a custom product, we'll get a truncated lead time. If it's a non Custom product, there's not a huge risk, so we'll just go ahead and place an order. Um, but we go from you know having a 20, 30, 40 week lead time to we get a 12 week lead time from Rexroth, and then we can either truncate that again and give a customer a shorter release time, or they can just place an order at 12 weeks. Does this make our purchasing relationship and our purchasing pattern with Bosch Rexroth a little more uh, predictable, a little more dependable? A little less subject to swings yes and I'm glad you brought that up because we were the first distributor to do this with Rexroth um, and Rexroth has then now asked all the other hmm. Rexroth distributors to do this um, so when Rexroth calls and they want to ask well how many do they need how many do we need to produce to support them we've already given them all that information so is this your program did you patent it are you now going to get royalties <laughs> off of no, the, off no. the program no, I wish <laughs> but no no, we've been using this program uh, for a long time, actually. Uh, we just kind of formalized the name now. 
Um, and the name again is what? Is MIM for Morale Inventory Management. Right. We've been doing this in some form for our customers um, way longer than now. So you, it, it's something that has been around for quite a while. Yes, it's it's been around for a long time, and it's very it's customized to each customer. And I wouldn't I would say that not every customer is on the exact same program. It's the same steps. It's the same team that supports it, but each customer wants something done a little bit differently. We're still doing the same projection. We're still keeping inventory, but maybe they have different uh, information that they provide to us. Well, they have different release dates. Is that one yes? Of the usually, it's re- it, the big one is a release date. Is a release time. So we have customers that have vastly different release times. And a lot of that has to do with what they're comfortable with us sitting on in stock or, you know, they also sit on their own safety stock as well. So that all goes into the calculation of what is a reasonable release time. So a customer will have their own safety stock in addition to what we are keeping. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not a requirement. We prefer that because if we're going to try and help buffer a situation that might come where a lead time jumps 10 weeks, Mm -hmm. we can support that, but we can only support that to a certain extent. So we ask the customer also to help support that. So where do you see this program going? Do you see the program changing? Are there things that we're in the process of implementing? Or what would the future in three years look like for the MIM program? So the program... The team around it and the document that we use will stay the same. We use a document we call it a ledger report. It's an Excel file. Um, That will probably stay the same. But like I said, every customer is a little unique. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly kind of adapting that. Um, Right now we have one planner and one purchasing guy that really helps us out with that. That team, I see that growing over the next three to five years. As more customers adopt this and as more customers move business to us because we're able to help them with this. Is this a tool that's going to help grow market share for both Morel and for our customers? Yes. It really helps customers because they don't have to sit on as much inventory. Mm -hmm. So they can run a little bit leaner, which makes them more profitable. It also makes it much easier for them to increase production. So whenever you as a customer have to try and increase production, there's always that, am I going to be able to get the components? And you won't have to worry about that if you're buying those components from Morel. So if you're going to go to a customer and you want to talk to them about the MIM program, what's your 30-second approach to them? Usually it starts with, are you having issues with supply chain? Right now that's an easy question because everyone is. Um, But we usually start with that and then, you know, we just pitch the idea. What would it be like if you'd ever had to worry about does, is this guy going to be able to deliver on time? Or, you know, I don't have full visibility with what my other vendors are doing. We give you full visibility to what we have on order and when we're going to receive those orders. And when we see an issue come up, we proactively handle that issue instead of letting it come to fruition and shutting the line down. The customers have insight into the, into the whole ordering process. Yep, they have full transparency. All our open orders and dates are all in the document so they can see everything we have on order at all times. That's fascinating. It sounds like a great program. And as far as you're concerned, it's successful in bringing business in. It's very successful, yes. We've had a lot of success with it. Mike, thank you for taking the time today and talking to us. Thanks. Appreciate it. If you'd like to learn more about the Morel Inventory Management Program, you can visit our website, morel-group.com slash MIM. Don't forget to subscribe to Evolution and Controls on whatever platform you use for podcasts or on YouTube for a video version so you can be updated when we release new episodes. Thank you again for joining us today. I'm Tim Wilson, and remember, keep moving.